Hello and welcome to another edition of Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast. I'm Captain Rick Riles. Hey, it's, we're wrapping up the year. Oh my gosh, 2022 has gone by like a hurricane. It has gone so fast. Um, it's it's hard to believe that we're drawn near the end, but this is the next to the last one we'll do this year. And we're recording it on the day after Christmas. I want to ask the boys about not only how their fishing's been, because I know their weather's been challenging, but I want to know the best fishing present they ever got. I, I know for me, God, it was an incredible story. I, I was in high school uh, dating a lovely young lady who had invited me. Her dad worked for the newspaper. He got tickets to the Gator Bowl. And uh, I, I said that, you know, we'd go, I'd take her. And uh, the Jacksonville um, Offshore Club used to have a sailfish anglers tournament in Fort Pierce between Christmas and New Year's. Well, this would involve me leaving a day early, which didn't really upset me all that much, except here came to me leaving a day early, and the tournament had two more days, and I was tied for first place, and I couldn't couldn't go back. I just... I didn't have the motel reservation, didn't have money for another motel room, uh, to be honest and everything. I'll never forget, went to the Gator Bowl. I doubt I was a real entertaining date. Um, But anyway, when when it was over, I uh, went home, went to bed, and apparently my mom told my dad about it sometime very late at night, and he came came in the room and shook me awake and gave me a hundred dollar bill and told me to go finish what I'd started. As it turned out, that was enough money to get me back to Fort Pierce. And uh, my buddy Brad Reed and I fought it out on the last day and, and I beat him by one fish. So my favorite Christmas memory of, uh, of fishing stuff, but there were Zebco 202s. There were cast nets. There were everything a young boy who lived on trout river could imagine, but I want to hear about it from the guys. So why don't we make a quick trip over to Costa Rica, check in with Craig Sutton, see how the fishing is there, and then we're going to hit Florida hard. We're going to go up in the northeast corner, start with David Borey's, work our way down the east coast through Ala Mirada, up the west coast, out the panhandle, get the latest in fishing news, and find out what the guy's favorite fishing present was ever. The Florida Sportsman Action Spotter Podcast is brought to you this week and every week by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum. Oh, it's the best chum on earth, all right. By Nasara Paradise Rentals, your dream vacation. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. By Young Boats, you want the finest in flat spay and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. By the Castaway Hat Company. That's the hat that's helping save our seas. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price every day. Let's get it started with a trip to Nassara, Costa Rica, and one Craig Sutton. Yeah, let's get it started tonight with a quick quick trip. Try saying that fast three times. To my favorite spot on earth, the Blue Water Troll. That, of course, is Nassar, Costa Rica, where Craig Sutton is large and in charge. Craigie, how's it going at Nassar? I'm good. I don't know about in charge, Ricky, but I guess, I guess I'm large because I put on some weight, but that's okay. <laughs> but, you know, it's good down there, man. Just, you know, typical spring, getting ready to transition into summer. And the mahi bites just been as consistent a, a start of our year as I've ever seen it. Nice fish, you know, some yellowfin mixed in, sailfish and marlin. And, you know, every trip we're getting four or five up to about eight mahi. Wow. And they're all nice fish. They're from 15 to about 30 pounds. And, shoot, that's a good day. That's a, that's good, a good day, day. Craig. And, and I really hope, and they had a better fall than they anticipated in the Keys in South Florida. You and I had a pretty good spring out of here last year. Not – not the yeah. old days good, but better than the last few years. Man, I'd love to see those fish come back to where they used to be. Yeah, I would too. I'm fixing to go try here on Wednesday, see how it is. But, yeah, maybe so. We'll find out. Craig, well, I think sure seems to be up here. Craigie, I'll be 70 years old in two weeks, and today was the first day ever that I didn't go fishing because it was just too dadgum cold. Dude, I would not admit that. <laughs> Craggy, anyway. Craggy, it, it, my the water on my dock hasn't defrosted since I I don't know what, at least in the last four days. 
I mean, my, well, my wash down hose is a popsicle that's attached to my dock. I mean, it's, it's really cold, dude. Yeah, it's, I can't remember three days of this cold of weather in Florida in a long time, but it's what we've been needing up here that, that is a cold snap to get the water cooled off inshore. So I think, I think Wednesday's going to be banner day. I, yeah, really I, do. I just hope it didn't hurt the snook. We'll, we'll have to see, but I'm, I hope they've adapted oh, and, sure it did. and done you okay. Know, sure yeah. it did, don't, don't you think? I yeah, mean, anything, I do. Anytime it blocks below 50, yeah, I heard it was 51 yeah. in Miami. So, wow. You know. well, you, oh, I know. Wait a minute. Are you talking about water temperature or are you talking about air temperature? No, air. Oh, air okay. Okay. That's yeah. no big deal. I can tell you it was, yeah. I can tell you right on top of the river where I've been for the last 30 years, it was a solid 24 on Saturday morning now. Yeah, it was cold. It yeah. was really cold. But, yeah. You know, it's uh, look at the the cam down there, coast. It's beautiful. Absolutely not a cloud in the sky. Cool. Every single day, you know. And I left there last month, a week ago today. It was just, it was beautiful. Not a cloud in the sky. You can't and beat you, that. You couldn't yeah. ask for better. No, you couldn't ask for better weather. Oh, that's you really great. couldn't. Our shore should kick in down there. I would think after this full moon. I think it's next week on what is it, fifth or sixth. It sh- they should kick in in earnest. But we had them last week when when the East Coast got that front. It blew for about two days, but they uh, it it backed right back off today. It was it was real light in the morning down there, and then on shore from about ten o'clock on. But real light, but good deal, beautiful season. Hey, beautiful. Craigie, real real quick before I let you go, what was the what's your favorite ever? fishing Christmas present you got? Shoot. It, it, it happens every Christmas. Yeah. It's giving me one more year to go blue water fishing. Well, you really. know what? That's, a, that's <laughs> pretty strong right there. And my, and my family and my grandkids. You know, what more can you ask for? Yep, you got it. I think we've got it all, son. All right, Craigie, yeah, we do. appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I'll be looking forward to it, brother. I will, too. Thank you, Craig. Craig Sutton. Now it's time to hit Florida. We'll start up in the northeast corner with Captain David Borges. David, how are you? Hey, buddy. I'm thawing out, but uh, <laughs> just barely. David, I, I just told Craig I'll be 70 years old in two weeks. Today is the first day I've ever stayed home because it was just too dadgum cold. Yeah, it was a, it was a brutal three days. Uh, you know, not just – I mean, the first first couple of days, the wind – we had wind gusts well over 30 mile an hour, so it really brought that uh, temperature down. Uh, got some reports on the water uh, today. Uh, we did see some water temperatures drop. I thought, you know, they were going to be somewhere maybe in the mid-50s, but it looks like they're going to be in the low 50s. Yeah. Uh, some 50, 51, maybe even 52-degree water temperatures. That's is chilly. What you can expect to see. That's very chilly for us. Or for the for anybody in Florida, really, and uh, it is going to be tough. It's going to be tough fishing, and uh, I'm going to give you some some of my tips and, and some things that's going to help you anglers. I know a lot of people got this week off and they're just itching to get out on the water, uh, you know, because they have these days off. And and it's actually the weather as far as the winds have, have calmed down. It's still cold, so I think it's fishable. I th- I think go ahead and give it a shot. Get out there this week. And this weekend, uh, but here's some few tips for you. You know, really slow your presentation down. And and when I say slow, I mean just as you know, you really, really got to get it in front of the fish. And, and you, you really, they're not going to chase anything down. You can forget them chasing anything down. Uh, the other thing is use your sonar. You know, you, use your fish finder, not just to find the depth, but to, to help find the fish. This is a time of year where a lot of these fish are going to move out of the shallow water uh, and they're going to move into deeper water where the temperatures can uh, can sort of maintain more constant uh, temperatures. So use that depth finder. Look for, look for signs of bait. Look for fish down there. Um, I did it the other day, and it produced some really good trout out of 20 feet of water. Uh, you know, a lot of the inshore guys, they, they, they have a tendency not to really use their depth finders in deep water to look for fish. But 
Uh, I highly recommend it this, this time of year. Uh, live bait, I would say, is a must. Mud minnows or shrimp, either one of those two will work good uh, this time of year. And be prepared for these fish to strike when your lure is dropping, on the drop. Uh, so a lot of times you might not feel that hit. So try to get your line as tight as you can and uh, be ready. You know, to, when you come tight, you could have a fish on because he probably hit it on the way down. David, um, I, I so, absolutely believe whether we're talking uh, bass fishing, whether we're talking offshore, whether we're talking whatever we're talking, the biggest mistake most guys make is fishing too fast, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and especially this time of year. And I even tell my clients, I want you to slow it down. And then when you think you're really slow, slow it down a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. And and this is the time of year. And, and the thing, you know, you know, you say, well, what are you doing? Are you dead sticking? If, if you're going to dead stick, and, and I'm telling you, these fish aren't going to move much. That's why I think it's more important to find the fish first and then try to get your, your bait to the fish whichever way you can and and the way i like to do that is throw up towards the like if i'm, I'm fishing a, a drop down or a ledge throw up and sort of work my bait down that ledge till i get into that deep water and a lot of times you'll feel them pick it up you'll feel that thump and uh you know but i'm not dead sticking you know i'm slowly moving it and i'll move it a little bit and then i'll let it sit i'll move it a little bit and i'll let it sit uh, and, and, you know, we did pretty good the other day. Um, when that tide starts to move out, you know, I like to work, uh, some of the edges, you know, looking for the redfish. Um, it, it's going to be tough fishing, but you know what? I think if you get out there and really work at it, you, you can have some good days out there. Good deal. Good deal. Just slow it down. Hey, real quick before I let you go, what was yeah. your, what's your favorite Christmas present ever fishing wise? Oh, well, you know, God, I, I mean, I think everybody remembers their first rod and reel, and, and that was exciting, but I would honestly have to say my first, and, and it was, to this day, I still think about it, uh, mom and dad got me a canoe. Oh, there you and go. this was when I was still in high school, and I tell you what, I absolutely loved that thing. Uh, I would go to the creeks, I'd find lakes and ponds. I'd fish the back bays in the bayous of Biloxi, and uh, I really love love having that canoe. It gave me the freedom on the water, and uh, it, it was I think it was really really key in developing the personality I have today. It was having that canoe early in life. Gotcha. I got you. That's an excellent thing to remember your mom and dad for. That's for sure. David, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. You know where I'll be, Ricky. Bundled okay. up right here in Northeast Florida. All right, Captain David Boris. And if people want to, if people want to do something smart and book a trip with you, coming into the new year, come to Jacksonville and go fishing with you. How should they get a hold of you? They can contact me 904-708-8915. All right, you got it. Thank you, Cap. We appreciate it. All right, Ricky. Take care, Captain David Boris. Now, let's head down to East Central and check in with Captain Jimmy Ross. Jimmy, is it cold down there? Well, I saw something for the first time in my life, Rick. I'm not as old as some, and I'm not as young as others, but at 55, yesterday morning, there were ice pellets, sleet, if you will, falling in my yard and on my, mm -hmm. my roof. I, I, and uh, that's about enough of that. If that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you how smart your boy is. All right. I'm driving in to do the radio show on Saturday morning. And I think, man, look at all this ice. I wonder if the water, if the fluid in my windshield washer froze. So I was stupid enough to hit the button. Nice. Jimmy, Jimmy, it didn't freeze, but it froze the second it touched that windshield, buddy. I'm yeah, I was going to say. I I, I've, I've done that before. I was up in North Carolina, and I was like, you know, my windshield's awfully dirty. Maybe I'll just clean it. Wrong. No, no bad was, idea. I, yeah. I immediately had to pull over to the side of the road and wait for the defroster <laughs> to get it get it off there. Yeah. No. Sound, no. Sounds strange. Don't feel like the Lone Ranger. I've done that myself, Rick. Sounds strangely familiar. 
Hey, Jim, what was the best uh, birthday present, or birthday present, best Christmas present you ever got fishing-wise? I think it's probably the first spinning rod that I ever got. My dad got me an old um, Daiwa spinning reel, and I don't even remember the model of it. I think it was a, a I think it was a model 15 or something like that. It was an old silver spinning reel. It was about the size of what we would consider to be about a 4,000 these days. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, about a seven foot medium action fiberglass rod. And it had those fancy new ceramic guides. Oh, on it. yeah. You were bad then, buddy. <laughs> you were bad to the bone then. Yeah. And, uh, and I spooled that thing up with bright yellow string, uh, 12-pound test string line, and I, I went that. to town with that thing, catching everything that I could catch out there in the, in the, in the canals and creeks and ditches around Rock Ridge, and then I'm pedaling down and, or going with my grandfather down to the salt water and uh, getting out to the port. And it, was, it was the rod that I caught my first bluefish on topwater on, mm-hmm. standing on the tip of the rocks at the South Jetty at Port Canaveral, throwing a pencil popper out there and caught bluefish on that thing and uh, just had a, had an absolute ball with it. That was probably the best because that's the thing. That's, that's the one that really kicked it off for me. I had, you know, had a couple little push buttons here and there before then, but, but that little, that little Daiwa he got me that, that was, that was just a great little combo and it really catapulted my fishing uh, because now I could cast twice as far as I could with, you know, before then, um, and you know, not only rod length, but just the, the ceramic guides just cast so much better than my than my old metal guides. But sure. that, that had to be the best one. Had sure, be. yep. I can I can remember a particular now. See, like every year because the water we fished in was brackish, so those Zebco two hundred twos didn't last very long. And, no, and, no, they didn't. With those great drag systems they had, and um, <laughs> I had twitched a little tiny rebel in my aunt Lillian's farm pond a thousand times and on the thousand and first boom this bass that weighed about 12 ounces okay <laughs> <ate> that rapala <laughs> and uh, jim that was that was one of the early things i mean that was i ran from the pond to the house with that bass dangling from the end of my rod Oh, and it, yeah. and it, yeah. it had to have been, oh, it was at least, it was probably half a mile back to the house. And, and uh, oh, I couldn't wait to show my dad. Jimmy, we appreciate it ever so much. Please tell me we can check with you next week. I look forward to it. We'll hopefully have some reports from this week. Uh, and, you know, the, uh, long as long as this water starts to starts to warm back up a little bit, these fish are going to get right, and I can't wait to get out there. So, oh, yeah. looking forward to having, having something solid for you guys and gals to go catch. Good week. deal. Thank you, Jim. The year was 1953 when one of the true pioneers of big game fishing just hung it up. No, it wasn't any of our podcasters. It was none other than Ernest Hemingway. I just don't want to do it anymore, he's credited with saying. The tackle has become so sophisticated, the fish just don't have a chance. Can you imagine walking him through the aisles of Strike Zone Fishing and showing him the latest and greatest from Shimano? Can you imagine handing him a Saragusa spinner that weighs less than his bait did and could put more torque on a rampaging tuna than the giant old reels of his day? No, Ernest, I'm afraid you left us way too early. The fights with great fish still go on today, and sometimes we still get beat. But if I were a sea monster of your day, I think I'd still rather do battle with you than face the tools that Shimano has stocked in Strike Zone Fishing 68 years later. All through the teenage years of my life, I would have headed to Fort Pierce, Florida tonight to compete in the Northeast Florida Anglers Sailfish Tournament from now till uh, th- uh, New Year's Eve when it used to wrap up. Uh, John, how would I have done? Are they biting? Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of action. I, mean, I know they're catch- catching a handful of sailfish, but um, just not seeing the phenomenal sail fishing yet. I, I think we are overdue because we have some phenomenal sailfish conditions right now. You do right now. You know, there ain't no doubt. These north winds and this colder colder weather is definitely going to get the sailfish fired up and i i think i i would expect to see some phenomenal sail fishing in the next couple days so i mean i would stay tuned and i would expect to see you know guys catching you know seven to twenty fish a trip 
you know, and that, that could be, that could be the low end. That could be the high end. And you may even see more than that. Wow. Uh, now the Pelican starts after the first, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's not a major tournament going on this week. I, I don't think we have any major tournaments this week. We had the, um, I get, I get them confused, but I know there, I, we, I thought we had the, um, fish head. Yeah. The quickie. Quick, but, yeah. How, how did that go? Uh, but I'm, I'm looking online. I'm trying to find the actual results right now. I can't seem to find the results for that tournament. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of people posting on Facebook, so I'm going to venture to say that it, it was all right, but it wasn't phenomenal. Okay. What else have you heard fish wise? I was catching a handful of blackfin tuna. Uh, seems like the kingfish have been somewhat of a problem. You know, that's been in a little bit shallower, um, 60 to 90 foot of water. A uh, few cobia here and there. I did see a nice, like, 35, 40 pound cobia caught a few days ago. Good one. And a lot of, a lot of vermilion snapper, a few muttons. You know, if you're bottom fishing, I would expect some decent snapper fishing right now. And as always, we're, we catch a lot of lane snappers this time of year. And that's 70 to 120 feet of water as well, typically fishing chicken rigs. I'll do that as a last resort at the end of the day if, if the, the trolling just wasn't that great. It's always nice to catch a few snappers for dinner on the way in. Buddy, I got to tell you, a, a piece of fried up lane snapper ain't no bad dinner. No, not at all. I've, I've eaten them whole. I don't mind scale on them and gutting them and eating all that fish whole. Uh, my wife doesn't exactly like looking at that, that whole fish when we're we're cooking it up, but, but when we start to eat it, she sure changes her tune because, boy, <laughs> they, they can be quite flavorful when you eat the whole fish. Indeed, indeed. All right, Cap, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Yes, sir. Okay, Captain John Earhart from Stewart, Florida. Hey, it's finally fall, and how many of us have been waiting for the magic of the mullet run to start? There are literally miles of mullet moving along just about every area of Florida coastline. What you need to cash in on the tarpon, snook, reds, trout, sharks, etc. that are feeding on the poor fingerlings is the perfect mullet imitation. Well, for my money, you can skip all the high-dollar made-in-China mullet imitators. For me and all the podcasters I've talked with, the perfect mullet imitation is made right here in Stewart, Florida, and it's the DOA Bait Buster. Mark Nichols, the owner and manufacturer of DOA, spent years designing different bait busters to swim shallow, medium, or deep. What makes the bait buster so special? I'll tell you what I think. I think it's the tail. If your bait buster is moving, the tail is flapping. No predator can stand that tail flapping in his face. The DOA bait buster. It's the perfect mullet run bait. Now we're going to quietly sneak down to Miami to talk to the king of all charter boat captains who right now is overseeing a group of hogs deciding whether or not to shoot one. Are you there, Ray? <laughs> How are you doing? Doing fine, Cap Rocher. How about yourself? I'm good. Fortunately, they have bad hearing, so they're about a hundred yards out there. Okay. I think they'll. I think they'll weather this report. Okay. Okay. If <laughs> if they work their way close enough to you, are they going to be in trouble? Uh, maybe. I'm okay. sitting with Charmaine. She's pretty. She's pretty dangerous. <laughs> have, I've, I've been I've married that. to her for 20 years. I can tell you all about it. You know that. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know one just like her, by the way, just so we're clear. How's, yeah, it, how's right. the fishing been off Miami this week? Actually improved a little this week. A few more sailfish showed up. Um, we've got a couple of wahoos in between, you know, trolling the bottom spots, and the bottom fishing has been decent. We've had a, you know, a couple nice bottom fish between some nice size snapper and legal grouper and, it hasn't been a whole lot of anything, but enough to get by, you know, some vermilions and yellow eyes and a few kings. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're, uh, we're picking away. Good deal. Good deal. Well, that's steady fishing. Now I would think this time of year, you're, you're pretty booked. Didn't everybody on vacation this week? Uh, it's a busy week. Good. We're, this is usually the busiest week of our year. We're off a little bit, but we're still, we're still busy enough. Good deal. Cap, go shoot a hog. I appreciate it so okay. much, and I look forward to talking <laughs> with you next week. All right, bud. Take care. Thanks. Captain Ray Rocher. 
You know what Yamaha outboards love? The genuine formula and consistency of Yamalu marine engine oils. Blood, 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 blood. Outboards are subjected to punishing conditions like high loads, salt, and humidity, a mix that automotive oils can't handle. Yamalu full synthetic and marine performance formulas are certified to protect against friction and corrosion for reliable performance every time. Ah. Find Yamalu marine oils at your nearest Yamaha outboard dealer. Locate them at yamahaoutboards.com backslash dealers. Yamaha, reliability starts here. Hey, Raj, you know, being consistent is a mark of a quality product. If you've been Florida's number one chum for over 10 years, there's got to be a reason. For 10 years, Tournament Master Chum has lived up to his name. That's why more tournament pros insist on Tournament Master than any other chum. It's the only chum with Menhaden milk mixed right in. That means it gets a scent out faster and deeper than any other brand of chum. It comes in a grind size for every species from kingfish to catch and bait. Your fishing time is way too precious to use second-rate chum. Bring the action to you by insisting on Tournament Master Chum. It's worth every penny. When you're ready for the finest in custom-made flat spay or inshore-offshore hybrids, you are ready to meet the Young family in Inglis, Florida. For over 21 years, the Young family has built custom boats one at a time for every type of fishing. Nothing can sneak up on a flat quite like the Gulf Shore flats boats, and I've never fished a better hybrid than the Young 24s and 27s. Rob Young is a naval architect who takes tremendous pride in each and every build for each and every customer that wants their boat custom-built exactly the way they want want it is it time for you to move up are you ready to own the finest boat built then you need to visit the young boat facility in inglis florida or check them out online at youngboats.com all right thanks to ray rocher for the news from miami good deal that the sailfish are starting to show up down there let's find out what's going on south of him down in isla Morada, where i'll bet it's not 24 degrees by checking in with one captain brandon storm brandon is it cold down there it's uh, about 54 degrees. Oh, so, up. yeah, my boat is cold. <laughs> That's not cold. I'll show you cold, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Tell me about the fishing down there. Uh, well, today is the first day I got in the water since uh, before Christmas week because I just got back in town last night. Uh, and uh, I went patchery fishing, which was um, – which is pretty good. You know, there's a lot of lane snappers. There's some um, porgies, a couple of hogfish, some yellowtails. So a lot of uh, steady light tackle action. Um, so I'm not complaining. I gotcha. That's good. Have you seen much in the way of sailfish down that way yet? Yeah, there's been a few sailfish being caught. And I bet after this, uh, this cold front, there's going to be some more down here. Um, so there's not a lot of people who went out today. Uh, just the fact that like 50 degrees, but also because it was, <laughs> it was, it was, it was raining the whole day. So it's not just 50 degrees, it's 50 degrees and, and you're going to be soaked all day. So, oh, okay. uh, so not a lot of people went fishing today, but I bet after this front that they're definitely, you can, if, especially if they're catching them off Miami, then you can surely bet that they're making their way around here. Oh yeah. There's no doubt. They, uh, they tend to, they migrate down through the keys then they hang a right and go over to Cozumel for the winter. I don't blame them. <laughs> I'd, I'd do the yeah, same. I'd, I'd be over <laughs> there in Islamahara, so ain't no doubt. All right. right. All right, Cap, as always, we appreciate it. I look forward to talking with you next week. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Brandon. Captain Brandon Storen out of Bud and Mary's in Ala Mirada. All right, thanks to Brandon Storm for a great Isle of Marauder report. Now, let's head over to 10,000 Islands and get the word from one Steve Dahl. Steve, how we doing? Hey, I'm doing great, Rick. How are you? Oh, I'm doing fine. Merry Christmas, by the way. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you as well. That's right. uh, definitely uh, some seasonal weather uh, that feels like Christmas right now for everybody in our state. That's for sure. It's it, was it? Did it ever get this cold last year? I don't remember it ever freezing last year. Yeah, I didn't. I, I hate to circle back to you know our, our big freeze we had a long time ago. Yeah, in twenty ten. Uh, yeah. yeah, in twenty ten, almost you know, twelve, thirteen years ago and um it feels like that. You know, we've we've had three straight days of over, overnight lows in the thirties out in the rural parts and um, you know, low forties and um uh, kind of like the Naples area and stuff, but uh it's chilly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh there's... Our water temp dropped 13 degrees in wow. three days. What's so, been the effect on the fish? You know, not too bad. I'm a little concerned, you know, our, our peacock bass fishery throughout mm. the area is actually mm. getting 
significantly better from our region all the way up to Greg Stamper's region. And uh, I don't have any reports as of yet of anybody seeing anything, but um, that's my concern. Those peacocks, you know, become a really fun fish for a lot of people to catch. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm not too concerned about the snook because it's only been three days and it's going to start warming up gradually yeah. here uh, in the next couple of days. So the snook, you know, back in 10, that was 11 straight days of, you know, temps in the 40s. So, I mean, that definitely gave us that fish kill back then. But, you know, the, smirker, the snook are pretty smart this time of year. They're finding those real, real backcountry haunts and hunkering down and uh, trying to find that shallow water that uh, has those dark bottom bays. So, you know, they're going to shut down, obviously, for a couple of days and it's real, real cold. But uh, I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to, you know, have any adverse effect on them, you know, long term. So I think we're okay in that regard. So and I hope so because <laughs> your your term. snook population has got awfully good the last few years. It has. It's been really good the last couple of years, and we're really looking forward to that continuing. So uh, it, it's uh, next year could be a banner snook year for us as far as size goes. So I'm I'm very optimistic, which is mm-hmm. great. I hope so. So uh, nothing seems to have been too adversely affected. Have you have you fished at all in the last week? Uh, yeah, I have. You know, we up to uh, I've had the last two days off, but you know, with the cold. But the uh, the reality is, you know, we're we're in full winter time mode. So you know, expect cold fronts. You know, every seven to ten days. And I got daytime low tides. I mean, these are challenging days to fish, but. It also, there's some pluses here, too, if you're not terribly picky about ultimately what you want to catch. Obviously, the sheep that are a good wintertime fish mm-hmm. are, are wrecks. If you want bigger ones, are wrecks and reefs. Have fish in that three to five pound class. So, you know, find some rocks, um, you know, out in those, you know, near shore wrecks and reefs. I'm telling you, you're going to do really good. Backcountry's got them, albeit they're going to be a little bit up more on the smaller size, certainly keeper size. The trout fishing should be fantastic. You know, this is our first extreme cold front of the year, and that's going to energize the uh, once that water temperature gets back up a little bit. Uh, the trout fishing should sustain itself, and it was good leading up to this, so I'm not too concerned about the trout. The black drum should really get fired up now. That's a real good cold water fish for us as well. Really easy fishing on the bottom. Um, in our area, they kind of like the passes a little bit, consider them like river fish almost in some of our bigger passes, like Dismal Key Pass, Sand Fly, um, you know, and, and West Pass is another good one. You know, find some deeper water that's got a little bit of current flowing through it and literally get a egg sinker, a swivel, 18 inch weeder, get it on the bottom, just kind of drift with it a little bit and you're going to pick up some, you know, some keeper size, you know, black drum and some giants and uh, probably a bunch of snags as well after a couple of hurricanes here. Yeah. But, um, but the reality is those fish love that stuff. So that's where they're going in the wintertime. They're finding those uh, deep water, you know, haunts. And uh, you'll find fish sunning themselves also schooled up on the flats. But those are generally a lot bigger fish. But if you're looking for table fare, that's the way to catch them in our area, in those mm-hmm. deeper passes. Buddy, I gotta tell you what, I will take a twenty inch drum and fillet him and and put his skin side down on the grill. That's yes, hard sir. to beat, Steve Dahl. That's yeah. mighty good yeah. eating. That's me. Drum on the half shell, I yeah. call it. It's from our Cajun brothers up north in Louisiana. And it doesn't matter if they're a black drum or a red drum to me. I mean, they taste really good on the half shell. No doubt so about that. Yeah. Cap, Cap, we appreciate it as always. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Oh, I can't wait. I'm ready to warm up. So. You got it. Thanks, Steve. Me too. <laughs> Captain Steve Dahl. Our thanks to Steve Dahl for a great 10,000 Islands report where it's even chilly there. Now we're going to move a little north further. Uh, once again, so pleased to have our old friend Greg Stamper back fishing and back giving us weekly reports. Greg, how we doing? I'm doing very well, Rick, overall. It's been, uh, been a big whirlwind for us, but, uh, I've been out a few times this week, and I have a couple of reports just to go back on last week from uh, you asking me if things have moved around. So we'll get to that. Okay. All right. Tell me now, about your fishing. Uh, overall, obviously, we've had a few giant cold fronts. Um, I know. I know it's been cold everywhere, 
but I haven't seen 39 on my car in uh, quite some time, and I saw it two days in a row, which for us is absolutely frigid. We did go out on one of those days, and we were able to pluck a few sheep's head here and there. The trout bite was just okay, and overall, it was kind of a stunt. You know, I mean, when you get three cold fronts back-to-back, that makes things kind of difficult. I'm sure it does the same in your neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely does. Yep. But it's what we have to deal with this time of year. You know, uh, I, I heard one of the guys saying the other day, Oh, I have to cancel so many trips. I have to cancel so many trips. I said, man, you're looking at it backwards. I said, this is, this is closed season. And every trip we do get to make is a gift. Look at it that way. You know, you, 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 you got to look at it like, Hey, we got a calm day in February. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I told the people. I, would, I said, listen, it's going to be tough. We're going to go after some things that I normally wouldn't do. We, we fished a lot of the brush piles and stuff that has been inserted into our area. We caught a lot of sheep's head, nothing very big. We did catch some trout. And it was the, those are the typical cold weather suspects. Our water temperature dropped almost 20 degrees in, in less than 30 days. So we're, we're really definitely in the, the coldest of what I hope we get this year. But you never know, Rick, to be honest with you. But to go back to, we talked about last week, how things moved around. So I did have the opportunity this week to take a friend's boat out with my numbers and just see some of the stuff that was close to shore. We're talking about things that were as close as two miles, and we're going out to about maybe nine miles. Mm -hmm. And two of the wrecks that I fished did move, but only a little bit. And three of the ones, three wrecks that I went after, or wrecks or pieces of wrecks, um, I have not been able to locate them. So, yeah, we definitely have some stuff that has moved around. Yep, yep. It seems like um, every time we have a major blow up here in northeast Florida, some of our small wrecks will get sanded over, and then all of a sudden you'll run over a wreck that you fished 30 years ago that had been sanded up, and now it's back. <laughs> so Yeah, uh, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I. I didn't get to a chance to do more than about five or six places, and I was just kind of moving around in maybe a 10-mile area, looking at some of my numbers. You know, and to go two for five, that's not too bad. Nope, not bad at all. Not bad at all. We've got a, uh, a wreck here called the Jack's Beach Wreck that was actually sank by a German U-boat right off of Jacksonville Beach. It was a big freighter, and it finally sanded over completely from a blow and then a friend of mine was just out trolling uh, one day and trolled over that area, and two great big red snapper came down and knocked, came up and knocked down his outriggers. He figured out real quick. <laughs> it was, okay, it was time to go unload that charter and head back out. <laughs> and they yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we're, fig we're figuring things out. It, it's all good. No, no big deal. But overall, I mean, the fishing this week was very slow. We've had back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back cold fronts. And probably the coldest weather that I've seen in, ah, I'll give it seven, eight years where you get those two or three days in a row where you never reach basically 50. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. we've, we've had yeah. it here. My, uh, the hose, my washdown hose, has a icicle that goes from the end of the hose down three feet to the dock. It's, oh. it's locked in place. Um, you know, and I got to thinking, shoot, I can't even, I can't even get water through the hose. I couldn't even wash down if I fish today. So it'll warm up. It'll get better. We, we need a little cold every now and then to remind us why we live in Florida. Yeah, you're right about that, Rick. Yep. All right, Cap, as always, we appreciate it. Please tell me we can check with you next week. Uh, absolutely. I'm hoping I can give you some better news about weather and everything else is going on but we're getting through it hey good. look at the bright side ray uh ray markham just a little bit north of you is dealing with red tide you don't need that added to all your problems uh that outside current comes down here rick don't don't add more of that stuff to my my world ain't gonna happen not gonna let it thanks all right, thank <laughs> you. thanks cap we'll talk to you soon you know, I'll bet you don't even remember the days that all us cool kids would rub baby oil mixed with iodine to help us get even darker in the summertime. Being burnt was cool, and even if you weren't a surfing legend, you sure looked the part. Oh, man, if a bunch of us old guys paid the price for our vanity. We never knew the skin problem and health damage that awaited us. Today's fishermen have the options of being so much healthier in the sun than we ever thought of. 
Thanks in no small part to the Castaway Hat Company, who not only provides our podcasters with Castaway straw hats, but they make the coolest prints on the underside of the brims you ever saw. You may think your bimini top or t-top blocks the sun, but as an awful lot of us OGs can tell you, you can't have enough protection from sun damage. Do what we do. Put on the sunblock and put on your Castaway straw hat. You'll look the part of today's best anglers, and you'll even be helping the environment. That's because for each Castaway hat sold, the Castaway Company is going to pay to have one pound of trash removed from our waterways. The burning Florida sun won't be raced in your skin, and believe me, when you age a few years, you'll thank us, old guys, with a lifetime on the water. So go to castawayhatco.com and get your best sun protection today. The Castaway Hat Company, they've got a hat for every adventure. Our thanks to Greg Stamper for a great Southwest report. Now let's move up to West Central. I know the chili is getting that far down. Talk to me, Captain Ray Markham. <laughs> well, I, I had a little icebreaker this morning. Other than that, not too bad. Uh, I'll tell you though, uh, when this weather gets like an extreme drop in temperature, like it has, fish just don't want to do anything yeah. but pretty much what we do just like get under the cover snuggle up and just kind of hibernate um it, it was a really really slow bite uh i talked to several guys this afternoon and and they all had the same story um they didn't catch any flounder they didn't catch any trout uh caught a few redfish mm -hmm. which was encouraging since the guys that were telling me that were out fishing around fort soto where uh, we've had a pretty good concentration of red tide lately. Good deal. Maybe um, it's moved on. God, well, I hope so. But my my concern more than anything is because there were dead fish out there, it just kind of makes me think that, okay, the fish are moving around and what's pushing them, you know, because they're not seeing any bait. So that's kind of mm -hmm. concerning. Uh, I'm actually considering running all the way up the other end of the bay, the north end of the bay uh, this week and see what's up there because uh, uh my experience in the past is that whenever we've had red tide move around the mouth of tampa bay has a tendency to push fish and a lot of fish keep going until uh, they escape whatever uh, bad water they they see or hear feel whatever <clears throat> and uh they kind of hang out there until it's uh coast is clear so maybe an opportunity gonna be super low tide and there's not a lot of water in some of the areas that I really want to go to, uh, but I do know there's some really deep holes. So yep. hopefully I'm, I'll be finding something in those holes. <laughs> yep. You know what we've got that, uh, that fish don't have? What's that? Fireplaces. <laughs> I'm, I'm very glad to have one tonight too, boy. Well, well you know, the, some guys are lucky that they're around a power plant or something where they've got an outflow. That's right. And, and, if, and, and if it were me and I was fishing – I would look for one of those outflows uh, where that warm water plume comes out of there and you will find a plethora of fish. Right. So. Uh, uh, many, many years ago, I was running by a place that I didn't know at the time was the JEA facility, Jacksonville Electric Authority, but it was, uh -huh. it's February and oh my gosh, a tarpon rolls in front of my boat. <laughs> I about had yeah. a heart attack. Well, I pull in this little <laughs> little facility, and here's tarpon everywhere. And I helped get myself through college running tarpon charters in February in Jacksonville, Florida, with you are the man <laughs> with with guarantee. I had a guarantee that you would at least jump a tarpon. And believe between me, you, you and Chris, between you and Chris Holloman catching snook for the last fifteen years or so, uh, you guys are the bomb. <laughs> let me let me tell you something. All right, I was catching fish. When Chris Holloman was pooping yellow in his diapers, I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I, I don't know. He he didn't say it was yellow, but I yeah. <laughs> well, I hear you. He's the best. You. He is the best boy. Tell you what, nobody knows snook and striped bass around here like he does. That's for darn sure. Uh, that's a fact. Ray, we appreciate. And, and, go ahead. Yes, sir. Go ahead. No, I was going to say we appreciate it ever so much. Please tell me <laughs> we can check with you next week. Yes, sir. As soon as I thought I'd be talking to you. <laughs> okay, Captain Ray Markham from West Central, where the fishing is tough, but the red tide may be on the way out. Let's hope so.
Academy Sports and Outdoors' mission is to provide fun for the whole family by carrying all the best gear from top brands, including Columbia, Yeti, Costa, Penn, Shimano, and so many more at prices that you're going to love. Whether you're planning on spending the day at the beach, hosting the friends in the backyard, reeling in a big fish, or gearing up for the game, Academy has a wide assortment of sports and outdoor products that will guarantee you that you're going to have fun out there. Hey, Academy has just opened their new store in Panama City, and look out, Tampa, here they come. You're next on the list. It's a dynamic and fun shopping experience while also offering convenient options such as buy online, pick up in-store, and free shipping on most online orders over $25. When shopping at Academy, customers are going to be able to take advantage of some great in-store services. How about they'll assemble your grill for you or your bike? How about scope mounting, bore siding, line winding and spooling, propane exchanges? They've got the pros to get it done and the ability to purchase hunting and fishing licenses. With Academy's best price guarantee, if you find a better advertised price anywhere, not only will Academy match it, but they'll beat it by 5%. Until the new store in Tampa opens, you can shop online at academy.com or through Academy's mobile app. You can sign up for email alerts, receive digital ads, offers, and exchange with Academy's social media accounts. Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, Every day. All right, thanks to Ray Markham for a great West Central report. Now, let's move up into the Big Ben. Now, here we are. we got to be quiet again because our buddy, Captain William Tony is out with his two-and-a-half-year-old hunting deer, trying to find a late-season deer. I'm guessing, William, that your two-and-a-half-year-old is not real quiet. <laughs> no, you're right. It's pretty bad. <laughs> but you know what? The little piece of property by the house that we have permission to hunt, the good thing was we found about three dozen white Easter eggs, we call them, and the owner is an avid golfer with a driving range right up through the middle of the property. So we did our due diligence, and uh, we picked up some golf balls, checked the feeder. The hogs have actually just gone crazy. We've been yeah. really dry here on the Big Bend. And then there's been a lot of hog sign anywhere there's water. There's a farm pond here on the property, and they have decimated it. So it looks, though, if I can't get a buck, there'll be plenty of sausage laying around because it could be on private property, of course, them being nocturnal. Uh, the red light scope, spotlight, anything setting out there is what it will take to get them. Plus, we got a trap, and it gets one every other day in it and just cannot keep up with them. That'll keep you in sausage. There ain't no doubt about that. Now, do you like uh, do you like wild pig sausage? Do you like venison sausage better? I like venison sausage, but we got a guy here up in English, Florida, Paul, and he has a uh, uh, type of you know just uh, process in place there. He does gators and everything, but he will he can take a bar a bear a big old you know boar hog mm-hmm. and. Take it and smoke it, and he makes summer sausage out of it. You cannot tell where it came from. I'll be darned. So he, he does a good job. But the thing is, you know, I don't know how many hogs this one family could eat. You know, one or two is a whole lot. And after you get to that point, you know, it's like fish. Everybody says, hey, bring me some yeah. fish. And you yeah. go, all right. You call them up, and they're like, well, did you clean them? It's like, <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I know no, that. but you said you yeah. want a hog. Here he is. I'm yeah. going to throw him out in your front yard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that probably wouldn't go over too well in my neighborhood, I don't think. I don't think. Tell me, William, yeah. have you been on the water at all? I have not gone out. Tomorrow will be my first day since Christmas, you know, before Christmas, and the front blew through. Good thing about here on the Big Bend is we got some spring-fed rivers and everything. Now, when I was out on Thursday, water temperature was already down to 64 last week. Sure. So. You know, it's dropped down. In fact, I've I've seen a couple reports on social media of some uh, snook died around Ozella and mullet and some ladyfish, which is, you know, kind of normal when we get a, a hard freeze like that. It did get down to 27, but you know what the funny part is? It never frost. That's huh. how dry it is. I'll be so no frost, but just ice. My bird bath in the backyard is about four inches deep, and it's been solid for two days. Mm-hmm. So... Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, you know, the frost is is just, there hasn't been enough moisture in this air to make it where it's going to stick or frost on the ground. Now, ice for sure. Now, we're going to rebound. So, what I suggest for our anglers out there, 
if you can find shrimp, and that's a big if, you got to look way ahead, you know, obscure tackle shops, bait shops, even going to local grocery stores for eating shrimp is the ticket to getting in the river where you can catch some mangrove snapper, uh, black drum, redfish, and you can jig some trout. Now, the further you get upriver toward the springs, you can get in the snook. I was there up in the Homosassa Springs Wildlife Park, and I can tell you what, right now, the snook are just incredible up there, just stacked in it. Yeah, yeah. Now, is it legal Is it legal to fish in them? Uh, there are areas that are closed in Kings Bay. Nope, don't touch those, baby. <laughs> Got sand spurs, sand spurs here. But uh, so, anyways, you get up toward the springs, there are closed areas where you are not allowed to fish. And uh, those are very strictly enforced. So what I suggest is do not cast past them. And we got sand spurs all over one's arm. Uh-oh. You better go handle it, Cap. <laughs> I've, I've got that, a... That's the best report I can give you. <laughs> and and stay, stay in the rivers now. you still got a couple more days of gags. So it's a good possibility. Oh, but I tell you what, you're going to have to really wait them out being out there in that deep water and as cold as it's been. So it's a possibility, but, uh, you know, you're going to have to work for them. All right. Go take care of the Sands first, Cap. We'll talk with you next week. Ten fold. Thanks, right. Thanks so much, Captain William Tony from Homosassa. Now, let's swing on out toward lower Alabama and check in with one Tyler Massey. Tyler, how we doing? I'm doing good, Rick. How are you guys? Good. Merry Christmas, my boy. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you, too. It was indeed. Tell me about your fishing. Is there anything going on out there? Or is it just too doggone cold? I mean, for me personally, it's it's almost you know too cold. But uh, you know, we we get out. We've been getting out a little bit. Uh, you know, mostly mostly staying inshore. Um, again, you know, this time of year with the the uncertain of, of the weather, a lot of cold fronts, a lot of north wind. It doesn't make offshore fishing all that pleasant. Um, but it is pretty easy to sneak out into the bay. Uh, and the, you know, there's, there's there's a few things going on right now. So uh, you know the the big thing we talked a little bit last week and it's, it's picking up is the sheep's head fishing. Um, that this time of year, you know, we focus fishing on the bridges. Um, the, you know, the, they've been biting any, anywhere in the intercoastal. So, uh, any bridges in there or Pensacola Bay or up even near, um, the rivers and that kind of stuff, all the bridges are holding some sheephead right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I wouldn't expect to go have, you know, super banner days, but you can definitely catch a few, um, you know, scraping pilings, doing the, the nitty gritty work of sheephead fishing. Uh, fishing real tight to the pilings, live crabs, live shrimp, that kind of stuff. Oysters are all working really, really well right now. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's not, there's nothing wrong with sheep's head. I can promise you that. Now, will that fishery, no, we will. that fishery will get better for you through March, won't it? Yeah, see, it, it'll only get better and better as the fish start moving towards the past. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the fish, will, it'll get better and also get easier, easier to find the fish, you know, more aggressive bite. Mm-hmm. Um, not the super, you know, technical, oh, I think I had a bite. Maybe let's look and see, like, and you know, when they get our past and start feeding heavily, it's, they eat more like a redfish, you know, they, they hammer it. Oh, good deal. Good deal. Tyler, we appreciate it, buddy. Please try and stay warm till next week. Hey, let me ask you a question before you go. What's the best, yep. what's the best fishing Christmas present you ever got? So I think the best, uh, Christmas fishing, fishing present I've ever got is, a. Uh, uh, a Garmin inReach um, uh, communication device. Oh wow! Okay, now so tell- that that allows you, you know, to receive and send text messages when you're offshore uh-huh. out of cell phone range. Uh, it's it's kind of like a um, you know a, a safety device type deal. Um, people use them for hunting and stuff too when they don't have cell service. Uh, and it's a pretty cool pretty cool device. There's like a a plan you get on just kind of like a cell phone plan, but it's inexpensive uh, and it's just a good peace of mind to have something on the boat whenever you're you know, you're, you're offshore at a cell phone range and, and me, me, be able to get hold of somebody. You know, it's, it's funny. You mentioned that, uh, texting home from offshore. I've got a, uh, uh, my wife and I've had a tradition for all the, uh, what, 40 years now we've been married in that when I pull into the slip and, and go to get in the lift, she will bring me a cold glass of iced tea. So I've always texted her when I come through the jetties, which is 2.1 miles from my house. Well, I've had this this big black lab for two years now, and she told me one day, she said, do me a favor, quit texting me when you come through the river. She said, believe me, I know the minute that boat enters the river. How incredible is that? 
the dog knows you're there. How huh? does he know? <laughs> I don't know. He's got <laughs> some intuition. I have no idea, but the minute I break those jetties and start up the river, he'll go get his mama. It's time to make the tea. That's crazy. <laughs> Tyler, I hope you, had, hope you had a great Christmas. we got a great New Year's on the horizon. Can't wait to talk to you next year. All right, we'll be here, Rick. Thanks, Captain Tyler. Captain Tyler Massey wraps up our trip around the state tonight. God, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of guys haven't fished much in the last few days, let's be honest. It's uh, been brutally cold all the way through, gosh, down to 50-something in Ala Mirada. That's a That's a genuine, sure enough, what we used to call the Alberta Clipper coming down here from up north. But there are reports of better sail fishing off of Miami and down into Ala Mirada. Uh, Fort Pierce and Stewart should be red hot based on the back half of this front. Um, that should start any time now. The ocean's laying down nicely. we got a good week on the horizon. We'll see what happens. But all in all, things are pretty good. I think the best news of tonight was Ray Markham says it looks like they're not dealing with red tide anymore. Man, I hope so. That's devastating for our West Coast fisheries. Florida Sportsman Action Spotter is brought to you this week and every week by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. By Shimano, bringing people and nature together. By Tournament Master Chum. It's the best chum on earth, all right. By Nassara Paradise Reynolds, your dream vacation. By DOA Lures, the unfair advantage. By Young Boats, you want the finest in flats, bay, and offshore hybrids? You need to check out youngboats.com. By Castaway Hat Company, the hat that's helping save our seas. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. As for me, I'm going to be back next week, just like always. For Florida Sportsman Magazine, I'm Captain Rick Riles, and we will see you in the new year.